Oh my, you again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Play conditioning. It is a term coined by H. Bomberguy in his video, Fallout 3 is garbage, and here's why. It is the concept of how a video game conditions a player into using its mechanics. So what is conditioning? Conditioning is learning from action and reaction, usually denoted by an audio or visual indicator. Most famously, Pavlov's Bell and B.F. Skinner's Operant Conditioning Chamber, better known as the Skinner Box. The former is known for training a dog to expect food every time a bell is rung. He discovered that if the bell was rung every time the dog was fed, it would eventually drool simply at the sound of the bell. The latter is a device for studying how animals adapt to different circumstances, usually presenting choices, some leading to reward, some to punishment. For example, a rat will be in a box presented with two switches, pressing one will result in food, the other in shock. From this, the rat will learn what is good or safe, and what is not. Skinner box is also a term used for some video games, generally ones that have the player complete a checklist to gain a reward. It could, however, be argued that all games are Skinner boxes, as they have a controlled environment with multiple choices, some resulting in a positive, some resulting in a negative outcome. That's been a broad rundown in those two pioneers of conditioning. The general thing to gather is that we learn from experiencing action, reaction, and stimulus with association. H. Bomberguy coined the phrase play conditioning to categorize how a game will teach you to how to use its mechanics, not through tutorials, but through application. That is to say, not by reading instructions, but by actually playing the game, though these may blend. He argues that Dark Souls offered its players near insurmountable obstacles before offering the player a shield and a sword, which in itself is a fine way to tell you the game will be hard. But the scenario leads to a specific playstyle. The player is in a narrow hall with an archer firing at you from the direction you want to go. You're then told to get your shield. Further up is the sword but the game has introduced its combat as shield before weapon, literally. You're told to put up your shield before doing anything else. Bomber Guy theorizes this led to a vast majority of players hiding behind their shield, waiting for an opening rather than taking risks in the combat. What if the sword came before the shield? Players would be encouraged to approach in a more daring way. This would change how we play the game. In The Witness, you awaken a corridor and approach a door. A button prompt appears and you're met with a puzzle. Your pointer sits in the middle of a line. One end of the line balloons out into a sphere which ripples. You click on it and find that you can drag to fill the line towards the smaller rounded end. You do this and the sound plays and the door opens. In this one interaction, you've learned two things. One, complete puzzles to progress. Two, the way to complete a puzzle is to fill a line puzzle. 
It's also worth noting that this was the only time you see a button prompt, because from here, you've learned how to interact with this world. From here, you move into a courtyard, with one exit. But the panel is covered, so you follow the cables out until you find an active panel. This puzzle has more dead ends, but you complete it and move to the next as the cable lights up and leads you to the next step. Until you've opened the exit panel. After, you are set free to roam the island, but in that courtyard, you've been conditioned to expect that you can tackle multiple areas in any order, given that you can find the preceding stepping stone. The game conditions you so well that eventually you try interacting with more. And guess what? It works! A colleague of mine said that playing The Witness is like learning a language. Bit by bit, new vocab is introduced via the symbols. And the path you lead it on is the grammar and application. Words turn into phrases, to sentences, until eventually you become fluent in this language of puzzles. Of course, play conditioning isn't simply the way mechanics are introduced, but how the game conditions the player to approach the entire game mentally and thematically. Dino Crisis You have mail. The spiritual spin-off of Resident Evil opens with classic late 90s hammy narrative and voice acting. Okay, this is the first checkpoint. Playtime is officially over, kiddies. The first five to ten minutes have you simply getting to grips with the controls. and the character's cavalier approach to mutilations. That's disgusting. This guy's been eviscerated. Something tore his intestines straight out. And a very simple puzzle. You'd be forgiven for thinking that this would be a walk in the Jurassic Park.
But then, the dynamic changes. All we can do is run from this dinosaur, as we suddenly feel very weak. The dinosaur took some shots and hunted us down. Players from this point on would treat the entire game with a greater air of caution. For me, so much so that the next time I saw a dinosaur, I did this. Uh, Let's let sleeping dogs lie. And... Oh my god! Oh, I was pressing the wrong button, oh my word. In one sequence, my entire attitude toward the game had changed. But what about negative play conditioning? Negative play conditioning can come from a designer's intentional design, or it may come from something that they have overlooked. Or it could very well be that players just simply don't react well to the mechanics offered up to them. Other than Fallout 3 and Dark Souls, the two video games that H. Bomber Guy had noted for their negative play conditioning. The first game that comes to my mind for negative play conditioning is Skyrim. In Skyrim, a fair amount of players ended up using the sneak and bow tactics. By using sneak and a bow, Quite simply, the player could sneak around any dungeon and just shoot all the enemies without any actual confrontation. Basically leaving the player invisible, just letting them breeze through like a deadly wind, which on paper sounds pretty good, but sort of removes all the confrontation that you would need for feeling involved in your quest. That's just one of many ways that it was easy to become overpowered in Skyrim.
as a game, there's nothing wrong with being overpowered. However, you do sort of lose the gravity of what you're doing. No longer are you going through an arduous quest, but now you're just some kind of weird godman walking around, shooting everyone and disappearing. It's kind of boring. Generally though, I find it hard to think of negative play conditioning. It seems that game developers do a pretty good job of testing out their games and seeing what works and what does not. But note that negative play conditioning does not inherently mean that the game itself is bad, unless it's Skyrim.